Put simply, the Tokyo Olympics are going to be a disaster. And while this may sound pessimistic, the data we have available suggests that it's the truth. So, if you want to hear why, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and listen until the end to find out why Tokyo is almost certainly going to be a catastrophe. Now, in order to explain this position, we must first realize that the Olympics are a massive cash drain that almost never end up bringing in profits in either the short or long term. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, the 1984 LA Olympics mark the last time that the Olympics were profitable, and this trend has continued to such an extent that the Rio de Janeiro Olympics in 2016 rang in a $2 billion net loss. Why is this, you may ask? Well, in order to host the Olympics, you need to build a lot. In regards to Tokyo, they have 33 planned sports on the roster, and every single one needs to have an IOC-approved court, arena, field, pool, or track. This usually costs a few billion dollars. In addition to the events facilities, you also need to build an Olympic village to house all the athletes in. And unfortunately, repurposing a few hotels won't cut it. In fact, back in 2010, Vancouver ended up shelling out $1 billion to make a village that met the IOC's standards. Beyond the facilities, you also need to make sure that there are enough roads, buses, and train lines to get people to and from the stadiums, which due to their size, often have to be built in rural areas. This in itself can easily run into the billions. But worst of all, once all of this is done, you shouldn't be able to count on getting your money back. After all, while the television ad and tourist revenues from the games are usually pretty large, since 1984, they have never been large enough. And worst of all, in the long run, many of the facilities that are built end up being closed down. After all, if a city has to build, say, a skateboard park, fencing arena, and equestrian stadium, these facilities will become obsolete if the local people don't skateboard, fence, or ride horses. When you also consider that most of the jobs made by the Olympics are very temporary and go away once the games are over, it's not hard to see why the Olympics often put cities in a worse financial position than where they started from. Circling back to Tokyo, it's clear that almost every debt-related problem has been amplified by the pandemic. After all, at a current estimated cost of $15.3 billion, it is already $8.1 billion over budget. This makes it the most expensive Olympic Games on record. Part of this cost is directly related to coronavirus protection measures, which have come in at a whopping $920 million and counting. Of this $15.3 billion price tag, the IOC is only contributing $800 million, while the $14.5 billion of costs left over are being shouldered by both the municipal and national government. Considering that Japan only expected to make $6.7 billion before the COVID-19 pandemic hit, this leaves them, all costs and revenues considered, in an $8.6 billion hole. And remember, this hole will grow even larger if they make less money than they would have pre-pandemic. Now, in terms of ad revenue they can expect to bring in, historical precedent is making the situation look pretty dire. For example, according to the IOC, in 2008, the Beijing Olympics managed to rake in $3.6 billion, and in 2012, the London Olympics managed to rake in $5.2 billion. 
This all came from television sponsorships, licensing, and ticket sales. In comparison, Japan is in a pretty tight spot. After all, despite having built up all of the infrastructure to host an in-person games in 2020, the stadiums being empty for COVID-19 safety reasons means that no one is going to be showing up. This means that ticket sales and tourism revenue will be virtually non-existent, while all the things that were built and paid for to house and transport the tourists will stand empty. This effect will likely spill over to the ad and television revenue. Why, you may ask? Well, to date, the Tokyo Olympics have been wildly unpopular in Japan and have been protested against repeatedly. In fact, according to national broadcaster NHK, in December of 2020, just 27% of people supported holding the games in 2021. And by January of 2021, a survey by the Kyoto News found that this figure had dropped to 20%. And while these are all not perfect indicators, what they do show is that most Japanese citizens are not too optimistic about holding the Olympics. This is problematic for advertisers because this really sours the mood around the games. After all, why should they spend millions of dollars on an Olympic advertisement that will be shown to an empty stadium and be received by disgruntled domestic fans? And while we're not saying that there will be no ad revenues, there should be an expectation that the ad revenues just won't be as high. In the face of a ballooning $15.3 billion cost, this is a problem. This is not to mention the fact that there is a high likelihood that a COVID-19 related incident could occur. Now, many people have pointed to the fact that many major sports leagues have been able to continue by having COVID-19 proof bubbles. In leagues where there are 450 players, like in the NBA, or even 713 players, like in the NHL, this can work. But let's remember here that even then, there have been a few incidents. However, when we look at the Olympics, the situation is not even remotely similar. After all, in 2016, 11,238 athletes from 206 nations competed, and that's not including all of their coaching staff and medical teams. Therefore, just the sheer number of people and the vast quantity of countries that they are coming from means that even if everyone quarantines beforehand, it can almost be expected that something will go wrong. So if the Olympics are going to be such a disaster, what should be done? Put simply, it would probably be a much better idea to simply postpone them for another year. And while that comes with a lot of financial issues in its own right, in both the short and long term, it may be the better option. And while we don't have all the answers and don't have all the data, we sure hope that the IOC and Japanese organizers involved know what they are up against. That's all we have for you today, everyone, and thank you all for watching. Let us know in the comments down below whether you think the Olympics should run or not. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notifications button so that you never miss out on any of our latest content. Until next time.